Welcome to the Right Science Daily Revision Boost. First of all, congratulations to our top three scorers from day seven, which were Aoife, Ravina, and Izzy. Well done, let's see if you can keep it up. Today's daily formula is that for gravity force. So gravity force in newtons is the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength, or g, in newtons per kilogram. In today's Biology Blast, we're going to have a look at human exchanges and transport. So the first thing we need to know is this idea of surface area to volume ratio. Now, that is the surface area per unit of volume of an object. And this is important because when we've got a large surface area to volume ratio, then diffusion distances are small, so it happens much faster. Large organisms have a lower surface area to volume ratio, so we get to a point when an organism is too big to get everything it needs by diffusion alone, as diffusion will be too slow. So to overcome this problem, our multicellular organisms have developed adaptations to increase the surface area to volume ratio at those exchange surfaces, like the alveoli and microvilli. When we talk about the circulatory system in humans, we're talking about the system made up of the heart, arteries, veins and capillaries. It's referred to as a double circulatory system because it's separated into two halves, your oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. And what happens is the blood flows through the heart twice on one circuit around the body. The blood is under higher pressure than in a single circulatory system. And it's a closed system because the blood remains inside the vessels at all times. We have three types of blood vessel we need to remember. The artery, which is under high pressure and carries blood away from the heart. The vein, which returns blood to the heart and it's under lower pressure, and the capillaries, which are where the exchanges take place. So the arteries have this thick muscular and elastic wall in order to withstand the high pressure, so you can recognise them by that. The veins have a thinner wall and larger lumen, so they've got a lower pressure, and to avoid the backflow of blood, they have valves within them. And the capillaries are only one cell thick in their wall to allow for fast diffusion. The blood itself is made up of four parts, the red blood cells, the white blood cells, plasma, which is the straw colored liquid that transports hormones, antibodies, wastes, etc., and the platelets, which are involved in blood clotting. The red blood cells are involved in transporting oxygen around our body, and they've got a few adaptations that allow this. They're small, they've got a large surface area to volume ratio, they contain hemoglobin, are a biconcave disc shape, and have no nucleus to pack more hemoglobin inside. The white blood cells are the ones that fight infection. Two ways they can do this. One is they make antibodies, and the second is that they engulf and digest the pathogen. We need to remember that the heart is made up of a special type of muscle called cardiac muscle, and those cells are able to contract without receiving a nerve impulse from the brain. You do need to be able to recognize the parts from the diagram on the left there, and remember the order in which the blood flows through. So vena cava into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle, through the semilunar valve into the pulmonary artery, off to the lungs, picks up oxygen and becomes oxyhemoglobin, then back through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, through the bicuspid valve into the left ventricle, and then through the semilunar valve into the aorta, which takes blood around the body. We've mentioned these structures called valves, and the whole idea of them, whether they're in the veins or in the heart, is to stop the backflow of blood. The left side of the heart has a thicker muscle wall than the right side, because the left side pumps the blood all the way around the body, so it needs a higher pressure. And the right side has a thinner muscle wall, as it only has to pump blood to your lungs. And if the pressure was too high, we'd damage the lung tissue. Don't forget today's daily formula is gravity force in newtons is the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram. Today's chemistry check is looking at exothermic and endothermic reactions and their reaction profiles. So an exothermic reaction is where the temperature of the reaction mixture increases, so we're giving out heat to the surroundings. Things like combustion and neutralization are good examples here. Endothermic reactions, then the temperature of our reaction mixture will decrease because heat is taken in from the surroundings. Good examples of this are photosynthesis, electrolysis, and thermal decomposition.
When we think about what happens during a chemical reaction, we know energy is transferred. But in the chemical reaction, the energy is transferred from the surroundings to break bonds in our reactants so that we get separate atoms and then is transferred to the surroundings from the reacting particles when bonds form between the atoms. When we're talking about a reaction profile, it's a chart that shows the energy involved in a given reaction. So any horizontal lines will represent the amount of energy stored in either the reactants or the products. The energy change is the difference between the energy transferred to break the bonds and the energy transferred when new bonds are made. And the activation energy is the energy that we need for the reaction to start. So I'll give you an example of the reaction profile on the left. On the left, we've got the reaction profile for an endothermic reaction. And what we see there, the energy transferred to break the bonds is more than the energy transferred when new bonds form. So it's a positive energy change. Whereas on the right, we have our exothermic reaction and the energy transferred to break the bonds is less than the energy transferred when new bonds form. So it's a negative energy change. And for those of you doing the higher tier, you do need to know how to calculate these energy changes. So the bond energy is the energy needed to break one mole of a particular bond. And what they'll do is they'll give you a table like the one on the left with the different bonds and the bond energies. Different bonds have different bond energies, so you must use that table. Key things to remember here is that these are mean bond energies, so the calculated energy changes may vary from any experimental values. Do remember that the sign is important when you're working this out so that when you come to do this, you add up the bond energies of everything in your reactants and then you add up all of the bond energies for all of the products and then you subtract one from the other. If we end up with a negative valve sign, then that means that we have an exothermic reaction. If it's a positive sign, it's an endothermic reaction. Don't forget today's daily formula is gravity force in newtons is the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram. Today's physics prep is looking at waves. So a wave is an oscillation that transfers energy and we've got two types, mechanical waves that need a medium to travel and electromagnetic waves which do not need a medium to travel. We can then talk about the waves taking two forms. They can either be transverse waves where the vibrations are at right angles to the direction the wave travels, diagram in the bottom right, or longitudinal waves where the vibrations are in the same direction as the wave travels, diagram in the bottom left. There are four terms we need to know associated with our waves. The amplitude is the distance from the middle to the very top or the very bottom of a wave and is measured in meters usually. The wavelength is the distance from one point on a wave to the same point on the next wave measured in meters. Frequency is the number of waves or oscillations per second measured in hertz. And the time period is the time for one wave to pass a given point measured in seconds. Waves can be represented as either a time trace or a snapshot. Now both of those graphs are going to allow us to measure amplitude, but they then offer different things. So the time trace shows how displacement varies with time at a particular position, and the time trace will let us measure the time period from any point on a wave to the same point on the next. We can calculate the time period by doing one divided by frequency. The snapshot shows how displacement varies with distance at a particular time, and this allows us to measure the wavelength from any point on a wave to the identical point on the next. When it comes to measuring waves, we usually do this using a ripple tank. So if you're asked to measure wavelength using a ripple tank, two options. One, you put a ruler in the tank and then you use it by sight. Or two, you use a stroboscope to freeze the waves and use a ruler to measure them. To measure the frequency, we can either place a marker in the tank and count the waves that pass it each second, or we can place a piece of paper just to touch the top of the bar, and then as it vibrates, we'll get that sound, which we can count each second. A couple of other ways that we can measure waves, we can use echoes, so you can stand a set distance from a wall, shout, and time how long it takes for the echo to reach you. 
We can also use microphones by placing two microphones a known distance apart, which are connected onto an oscilloscope, and then we make a sound and use the oscilloscope to work out the time it takes to reach the two different microphones. Final reminder, today's daily formula is gravity force in newtons is the mass in kilograms times the gravitational field strength in newtons per kilogram. Now we've had a quick recap, then head on over to Socrative.com and test your knowledge on the topics from today. The room name you need to enter is right 2662. Good luck. As always, if you've been unsure on any of the concepts we've gone through in today's Daily Booster, then the biology topic is in our B2 playlist, the chemistry topic, the C3 playlist, and the physics topic is in the P5 playlist for those doing GCSE physics, and in the P4 playlist for those of you doing combined science.